What's up everyone, today we are going to be doing a Q&A over the last of the footage that I captured at Raven Software Studios a couple of weeks ago. Once again, Activision did not pay for me to make this video. They did pay for my flight and hotel. However, thank you to them for that. The Q&A is going to be mostly Call of Duty related. I appreciate you guys asking me some questions on my last Modern Warfare Remastered video, which will be linked in the description if you did not see that. And if you're watching this video on the day that it is uploaded, October 28, 2016, we are one week away from Modern Warfare Remastered. It's crazy. It's already upon us. I am just getting used to Battlefield 1. There's a lot of video games I want to play right now. It's the end of October, so I'm playing scary games and sports games, but we are in the full swing of things in terms of AAA games hitting the market. I guess let's just jump into this q and I'm going to try not to repeat myself too much, but some of the questions are related to each other. So I'll try to edit around that, but if I repeat myself, I'm sorry. Let's go. First question. What do you think will be the next COD game that comes? Will it be in the future or something like World War I, World War II? So the next COD game is going to come from Sledgehammer Games. We are on the three studio release cycle. So in order, the next COD game will be made by Sledgehammer Games and then Treyarch and then Infinity Ward. Once again, Infinity Ward is releasing this year, obviously. Sledgehammer released Advanced Warfare. It was their first try at a full game by themselves, and there was obviously a lot of changes in that game. That introduced the chain-based movement system, or would you call it that? I, I guess it introduced the non-boots-on-the-ground era of Call of Duty that we are currently existing in. A lot of drawbacks to that, as well as some positives. I think Uplink is a cool game type that you can only do in that system but i know a lot of traditional call of duty fans aren't happy with the advanced movement era that we are in and i think it's something that once you go to that place it's really hard to come back from so i'll be interested to see what sledgehammer does it feels like if they go away from the advanced movement though it's kind of like they're saying we screwed up on the first game and i don't think that they feel like they screwed up they were definitely really active with the community i am really torn on what they could do for the next Call of Duty game. I really, if I had to bet on it, I would say something like Advanced Warfare 2 in the future because I feel like if they go to the past, it is going to be them admitting that they failed on their first try. And I don't think they feel like they failed. And I don't know how you go away from the advanced movement system. You introduce this into Call of Duty and now you're just going to say, yeah, we don't like that anymore. So we're going to try something new, which maybe they will. Maybe they want to try something new, be revolutionary once again. Uh, or try something old that is now going to be new. Who knows? Uh, you can only speculate at this point. I think it's going to be something similar to Advanced Warfare 2. And then Treyarch will hit us with the World War II era type game in 20... What would it be? 2017? What year is it? Yeah. I, I need to go faster on these questions. Next question. Please elaborate on that damage tuning comment. Please tell me the devs aren't going to be buffing and nerfing everything. So last video, I was talking about sniping in Modern Warfare Remastered, and I said that there needed to be some tuning from the build that we were playing, so I didn't know if the R700 was going to be as good as it was in the build. I don't know the statistics on the gun. It could have just been the same R700 that was in the original COD 4 game, and I was having a particularly good time with it because Pomage told me to play with it, and I had some type of Pomage level confidence while I was sniping. But there were some specific issues that I'm not going to go into because I think they're going to be fixed. The devs said that they were unintentional, and it doesn't seem like they were trying to create some type of competitive balance. It seems like it was one of those things where they're saying, oh, it's a mistake. I don't know what's happening there. Maybe we adjusted one thing and that kind of took the other thing down. So it doesn't seem to be an issue. I think it's going to be pretty similar damage to the original guns in COD 4, and that's how it should be. Will you and the crew come back and play on console or stay on PC? By the way, love the video. has been a big fan of the crew for years now. We're going to be playing on console most likely. It's something that still hasn't been decided and probably won't be decided until the Thursday before the game comes out. I mean, I'm going to be playing on PS4 regardless. If people want to play on Xbox, I guess I'll hook my Xbox up to play that too. But I'm more comfortable with the PS4 controller in my hands at this point, And I know a lot of other YouTubers are going to be playing on PS4. So I don't feel like I'm going to be lonely. I would like to play with my friends that I always play video games with on PS4. But I don't think that's going to happen. So... I'm guessing it'll be Xbox One. We're really split on that. It, I wish it was just easy. Like back in the old days, it felt like Xbox 360 was the obvious choice for reasons that will probably be covered in this video once we talk about some other questions. 
but it, it just had everything going for it in terms of creating content. So yeah, we're going to play it somewhere. It's undecided. Do you think they will ever take a step back from the alternative movement? P.S. Lovey bro. No homo. I talked about this a couple of questions ago, but I think it's hard to go back once you open that box because it changes the game types, it changes the maps, and you could just go back to the old Call of Duty, but then you have a whole new generation, quote unquote, of fans that love this game and played Advanced Warfare as their first game. So this is the only Call of Duty they've ever known. And then do you alienate them by going back to the old movement system? Those fans are going to be like, what the hell is this slow ass Call of Duty? So I, I don't really know. I assume that they'll at least keep sliding. Sliding seems to be something that, because I, I, I was introduced in Ghosts, and then it turned into sliding, jumping, and flying, running on walls, all of that. I would assume if they went back to World War II, there would be no advanced movement, but I know how much the studios, at least Treyarch and Sledgehammer, love competitive Call of Duty, and Uplink is one of the most, if not the most exciting games to watch in competitive Call of Duty. So, uh, I don't know. I, I don't think they would base that decision just on one game type in esports, cyber athletics. But who knows? Uh, I don't really know at this point, and I don't want to speculate. Is buying Infinite Warfare to get COD 4 worth getting? This question, obviously, is related to what your financial status is. As a person who plays video games for a living, it is very worth it to me. My brother does not play video games for a living, but he loved COD 4. He determined that it was worth it for him to get the Infinite Warfare game to just get COD 4, but I know a lot of his friends don't feel the same way, and I'm sure a lot of people don't feel the same way, so I guess we'll see what the market determines. If pre-orders were up or down, I'm guessing they're going to be down, but it is going to be interesting to see all the sales numbers, and this is a really pivotal year for Call of Duty because they are hedging a bet on remastering a game in order to drive pre-order numbers and hedging a bet on the fact that people are not sick of this advanced movement system, which may or may not be true. So we'll see. It's an interesting point Jehovah brought up. Should there be DLC, either free or not, that puts out maps from other games like Modern Warfare 2, like Terminal, High Rise, Favela, etc.? What do you think? I think they should. It would be interesting because Modern Warfare 2 had maps from Call of Duty 4, obviously, Vacant. I think they had Crash, too. I can't remember all the maps that were in COD 4 and Modern Warfare 2. I think they should do that. At the same time, I think Modern Warfare 2 is one of the best games to remaster candidates. I would say the original, you know, the earliest games are the ones that are most likely to be remastered. Who knows if they're going to remaster games again. If they don't really drive pre-order numbers, I don't think they're going to go through the effort of doing that again. But we'll see. I would like that, just for the good old times, quote-unquote. Do you enjoy playing zombies in Call of Duty? If so, do you watch Noah J's videos? I do watch Noah J's live streams and or videos, and I'm really amazed at what some people can do in video games in general, but especially zombies, because zombies isn't a complicated concept, right? Don't get hit by these creatures more than a certain amount of times, and you just live. The point of the game is to not die. Not hard to understand, but... Some people just do it so much better than others, and Noah is in that category. I just watch those people and think, what can they do that I can't? Obviously, they can react much faster, more than anything, but it's just crazy that we're playing the same game, and some people are on a much different skill level. I guess I should think about that when I play pickup basketball. LeBron James is obviously on a much different skill level for the game of basketball, but I wish I was better at zombies. If you told me that... I was going to still be a YouTuber. What would I want to be good at? I would want to be a quote-unquote zombies specialist. It, well, I mean a gaming YouTuber if I was going to still be in the gaming category because I feel like I don't know where I fit in really well in the gaming category. If you have something that you are really, really good at and you can focus on that, it gives you such an advantage because people know to come to your channel for this specific thing. And I have to depend on people coming to my channel for my personality, which is a very difficult thing to do when you don't have the highest self-esteem like myself, but I think it's going okay so far on my YouTube career. I guess we'll let time be the judge of that. Next question. Do you like the addition of new camos in Modern Warfare Remastered? I really do because if you're going to remaster a game, that's something that is a change that doesn't really affect gameplay and it's going to keep people playing because one of the points of camos besides just having a cool skin on your gun is to get people to play 
the game more than they normally would to achieve that camo. It's a meaningless visual thing you get in a game, but if you want to have the quote-unquote coolest looking gun, you're going to play the game more hours in order to get that thing. So to just put the same camos in the game that were in Modern Warfare, I think would be pretty lame it, because I you want to have that factor in your game of people ranking up for whatever reason, and that is certainly one of them. So new camos helps in that regard. Here is the billion dollar question. Do you think that this game will have longevity? And let's think about this in terms of not only Modern Warfare Remastered, but the game that it is packaged with infinite warfare and whatever call of duty games are going to come next i don't believe that call of duty will or could be killed at this point i believe it is closer to madden than it is to halo in terms of just releasing a product over and over again under the same name but the difference is that madden doesn't really change and call of duty constantly changes well actually you could argue that call of duty doesn't change that much i mean there are games like the difference between ghost and advanced warfare is a lot bigger than the difference between black ops 3 and infinite warfare but it's a franchise i'm really interested to see what the numbers will be for active players on modern warfare remastered versus the number of active players on infinite warfare at a given time i mean i really have no idea what game will have more players if I had to bet my life on it, I'd say Infinite Warfare. And I'd be interested to see what you guys think in the comments, simply because of the financial factor. It's cheaper to just buy Advanced Warfare, or wait, Infinite Warfare. <laughs> uh, hard, to, hard to not confuse them, double negative there. But I, I'm sure, almost sure, that Infinite Warfare will have more players. The question is how much will people play Infinite Warfare and or Modern Warfare Remastered? I don't know how much longevity the game will have. It's going to be a real blast to start the gaming season off in November. I mean, the gaming season has already started, but to really start the Call of Duty season off in November, I think a lot of my friends are going to be playing Modern Warfare Remastered more than Infinite Warfare for sure. A lot of YouTubers will be playing Modern Warfare Remastered more than Infinite Warfare. But speaking in terms of longevity, I wish I had a better answer, but I really don't know. I just want everyone to pay attention to the active player numbers. It's going to say a lot about what the future of Call of Duty is. Did you enjoy playing the Infinite Warfare beta? If so, are you excited for the full game? I did enjoy playing the beta. I'm not that excited for the full game because I know I won't play it as much as Battlefield 1 and or Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare Remastered. I still love my sports games. I put a lot of time into my sports games, especially when the NBA season is happening. I like playing NBA 2K and I like playing Madden. So I don't know what game I'm going to play the most. It's so hard to think about this career and what you're going to be doing. I'm definitely going to play the game for some funny moments and or clips because I think some hilarious things will happen during this game. It is crazy and fast paced and I appreciate a YouTuber like Merc Music who can not necessarily enjoy a game and still make great videos from it. I think there's a, I don't know, a vir I was going to say a virtue, there's not a virtue in that, there's a skill level in that that I would like to achieve because it's almost better when the game is silly and broken you can create a lot more hilarious scenarios i mean you could argue that modern warfare 2 is extremely broken and think of all the great videos that came from that game so i'm not really excited but i'm still gonna play it why were some of the guys from the crew invited to play when there are larger youtubers who could have went just curious thanks yeah we're not the biggest youtubers that play call of duty i mean we don't even really play Call of Duty, for the most part, at this point in our YouTube careers, definitely looking to get back to that this fall, but the short answer would be because it was not a paid event, I guess. I mean, it, it is exciting, but people got to play it at COD XP. Uh, what's the incentive, though? I mean, I went because I thought I could get good videos. I wanted to play Modern Warfare Remastered. I was very excited. I wanted to visit Madison, Wisconsin. I was excited, but YouTubers... This is going to sound dumb because it's not that difficult of a job, but YouTubers do tend to be busy because of the nature of their jobs in the gaming category. You're trying to make videos every single day, so you have to weigh time versus money. And if you don't think that it's going to be worth your time and you would rather stay home and make money, you're probably not going to go to the recording session. So I think it's mostly a financial and or business decision to not go. I had a blast though, and I'm glad I saw some of the people there that I did that I don't get to see very often and hang out with on a one-on-one -on -one basis, like Legion, like Jehovah, like Pomage, like T-Martin, had a blast drinking some fish bowls and going out to the college bars, and 
that's very fun and it was totally worth it for me. So that's the end of this Q&A. I talked for way longer than I thought I would. I'm going to have to cut the hell out of this audio. Maybe there's some related questions that I can cut out. In order to fit my audio over the gameplay, I hope you guys appreciated watching this. And if you're excited for COD 4, let me know in the comments anything related to the game or anything else you wanted to tell me. Just tell me down in the comments below. I will see you all later. Goodbye. Thank you.